Game on everybody and welcome to another video. I was recently playing my Amber Steel song deck and one week I decided to cut back on the amount of songs within the deck thinking that it wouldn't matter too much and I wouldn't maybe notice but whenever I was playing Ariel I was noticeably whiffing way too many times for my personal liking. So as I naturally do I always attempt to maximize my decks in the deck building process and I eventually created a program that tested over 20 million opening hands to find out my answer of how many songs should you play with Ariel Spectacular Singer? Let's get started. If you're interested in keeping up with the market trends of the Lorcana TCG, please consider becoming a Patreon, Twitch subscriber, YouTube channel member, or becoming a Discord server subscriber. Please also consider using my TCG player affiliate link before you shop for cards in the description box below to help support my channel to provide you with more amazing content. So here's the overview for the video. We're gonna go ahead and discuss the basics that you need to know to best understand the concepts within these videos and the goal of trying to figure out how many songs you should play within your deck. I'm gonna go ahead and also showcase the scenario and setup process on how I came up with these numbers. We're gonna briefly touch over the hypogeometric distribution formula. We're gonna also show snippets of my code that went over the 20 million different test hands and the results that it yielded. And then we're gonna wrap it up with the practical implications and strategies we can use to basically maximize our deck building as a group. Let's go ahead and talk about Ariel first. So Ariel Spectacular Singer has the ability of Singer 5. This character counts as cost 5 to sing songs, meaning she can sing cards that cost up to 5. And on play, you get to look at the top 4 cards of your deck, and if there is a song present, you can add it to your hand. The minimum deck size in Lorcana is 60 cards, so that's what we're going to go ahead and start off with. And the starting hand in Lorcana is 7 cards. We won't be discussing mulligans today, but with over a million different samples and test hands per test case, I think every hand combination is covered. Whenever you play Ariel, of course, we would like to successfully add a song from the top four of our deck, but the goal is to do it consistently. And that is the main part of this video. We're going to see how many songs we should play to consistently get this payoff. Touching over hypogeometric distribution, you do not need to know what this formula is, but if you're interested, this is what it is in the breakdown. But essentially what we are going to talk about and the most simplified version of this is we will be talking about what the deck size is minus one because we'll be assuming Ariel is in our opening hand. We are trying to solve for K the number of songs we should play. And um, when we play Ariel, we reveal the top four. So lowercase n is the amount of what we are pulling from the sample. And lowercase K is the success rate of this example. And for us to be successful, we want at least one or more song from the top four. So when we plug in numbers from 1 through 20, we get the following graph. So what can we do with this data and what's the best way that we can interpret this? So this is very subjective for the player and it also depends on the need for the deck. So think to yourself, is it absolutely necessary for the strategy to be successful? In this case, not really. It's just more of a very nice thing to happen and it really adds to the more consistent because adding a song from the top four is always a great feeling. If you whiff, it feels really bad. In comparison to the standard letter grading system, a grade of C is often considered average and the average will fall between 70 to 79 percent. So if we go back into the chart, we can see that number starts around 15 cards. But if you just take that value from this video here, you won't really learn anything because that's not even the actual result that we're looking for. Because there's actually a lot of variance and that's only one case of starting with Ariel. This doesn't even include the full opening hand scenario. So let's go ahead and talk about the limitations of this formula. So in this specific example of hypergeometric distribution, it's not always realistic because this only shows you the success of if you have Ariel within your opening hand and you have all the other cards in your deck. Well, in Lorcana, you start with seven cards. So, and Ariel also costs three ink to play. So you realistically can't even use her until your third turn. There's also slight variances if you go first or second because you do get that additional card. So that's when I actually created the program to help me with those specific scenarios. And this program always assumes that we have Ariel within our opening hand and that gives us our basically uh, average yield rate of success. As I was saying, if you do go first and on your turn three, you ended up with actually nine cards in your hand. If you go second, you actually have 10 total cards in your hand. So I went ahead and simulated 1 million test hands per ratio of songs within the deck of 60. And if you guys are interested in using this program, you can go ahead and test it out for yourself. It is available to all my patrons, Twitch subscribers, YouTube channel members, 
and all my Discord subscribers. At a very low level, the program essentially identifies our initial starting hand of seven cards, one of them being Ariel. It then simulates all the draws for the next turn until turn three. It then looks at the top four of the cards and then identifies if the test was successful or not. And then it reshuffles the deck and does the simulation up to a million times per ratio of songs. And then when the test is completed, it returns our success rate. And when you run 20 million different hands, this is the results we get. So right here, it gives you like a pretty chart and then all these charts and stuff are available on my Discord and all to anybody who's interested in these can get a better look at them. Now that we've collected all the data, we can go ahead and find out the new acceptable percentage rate with consideration of a bell curve this time. In a bell curve, above average is represented by the top 50% of the distribution. When we take standard deviation into consideration, we can actually find out what is considered above average of the average. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and finally answer the question. How many songs should you play? If we were to take all the data into consideration, we find out that playing at least 11 songs is the above average 50% of the presented songs range of 1 through 20. And if we were to consider playing 15 songs, this is the high performing above average rate. This of course is all subjective to how well you need Ariel to perform within your specific deck. But let's go ahead and consider 12 songs within our deck and use the data as a reference. Looking into our deck that has 12 songs as we mentioned, we want Ariel by turn 3 so we should expect on average to hit a song about 50% of the time. As the decks become thinner the percentage can drastically change one way or the other but having a baseline of success can give us more confidence when playing Ariel to successfully find a song. Let me know in the comment section down below how many songs you guys run in your deck. Also please let me know how helpful this was for you and while you're here please consider leaving a like and share this video with others and subscribe to my YouTube channel. All my other social media links such as my Twitter, Twitch, and Discord is available in the description box below. I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm out of here.